Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the uh, the webinar here today. Oh, we've got a, a nice little screen of myself that just popped up. Let's, let's get that every year. Um, welcome to the webinar this morning. This is going to be trading on the Nanix platform. Um, we'll we'll jump right into it. I know we're, we're a couple minutes late, but didn't just see people filing in, so I wanted to give them another second to, to come in here uh, with the platform. Uh, so today we're going to go over trading on the Nanix platform, as uh, you should be aware, as the webinar is called. Um, Real quick, we have this disclaimer that we've put up before all of our webinars, before all of our uh, YouTube videos, everything like that. Um, I'll let you read it real quick. Very basically, uh, it's going to be a pretty um, pretty self-explanatory disclaimer. Uh, you know, stuff like don't trade with uh, money that you can't lose, right? Uh, you know, trading involves risk, both in Nanex and really anywhere that you trade. So make sure that you're trading with disposable income, money that if, you know, a trade goes wrong, that uh, you don't need for your rent money or food or that sort of thing. I definitely want to be trading with that discretionary income. Also, I will be showing trades on the demo platform today. Uh, none of those trades are a um, recommendation to actually go make those trades. In fact, I'm going to be um, pretty much just picking them at random to show functionally how to make, make a trade. So, uh, you know, don't take any of the trades that I make and showing how to trade on the platform as uh, recommendations that you should also make those trades. Um, all right, I'll, I'll jump uh, jump really into the thick of it here. Um, so I got a little about me slide. Uh, I guess now you probably see my face up there twice. Um, so I've been working at Nanex for uh, wow, a little over four years now. Um, seems crazy, crazy to say that. Um, I've been working on the products, uh, the product and the platform, the last three or so years. Um, so basically the entire building of this platform I was here from day one, when I started, we also were on a, a older platform. So that's why I like doing these webinars because I've been around, I can kind of explain why we uh, did certain things, why we built things a certain way, um, and answer any questions, uh, that any of you do have. Um, and you know, just my personal life I've been trading for, um, actually I should probably say around 12 years now. Um, I concentrate mostly on equities and equity options. Um, I do dabble in a lot of other places, but uh, that's my my main area. And I, I don't really trade binaries, mostly because I I can't, uh, you know, I'm a Nanex employee, so I can't trade on the other side of any of your trades. Uh, not a lot to trade on the exchange. Um, so yeah, well, let's, uh, let's get into it. That's enough about, about me and everything. Um, if you do, uh, real quickly, if you do have any questions or you can't hear me or something's going wrong in technical difficulties, I do have the um, chat up on my side screen here. So I will be checking that periodically. Throw a question in um, if you want me to explain anything more or um, or anything. Uh, you want to you tell me I'm doing a good job, you want to tell me I'm doing a terrible job, throw it in the chat and I will uh, read that. And also we'll get some time for questions at the end. Um, this is going to be the agenda. We're really just going to go through the whole platform. Um, and let's jump into it because uh, we spent enough time on these slides and uh, I really like spending my time on the platform itself. So let's pull up. This is gonna be the login screen. The way you get here, go to nanex.com, hit the login button, and it's gonna take you to this beautiful login screen. Um, I'm gonna log into a demo today so I can play some trades for, for everybody. And uh, we're gonna log into my I like Nanex account. Oh, it would be helpful if I actually type something. And go in there. All right, so now we have our beautiful, beautiful platform uh, that comes up as we log in. Uh, this is gonna be what you first see when you log in with this nice little um, you know, image of the, the chart going across the screen. Um, let's just start with the left-hand side first and, and jump right into it. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna see all the different products that we offer. You're gonna see the different uh, markets on those products as well. So that's gonna be this finder window over here. This is where you're going to navigate uh, primarily through all the different markets that you would like to trade. Um, so as we go over, we see our binary options, our call spreads, and our knockout contracts. And underneath, you can go down and choose the uh, market classes. Let's today, let's go with FX. Um, I think we do go with FX a lot, but it's quite popular. So, and we'll go with, we always do Euro dollar. Let's do dollar CAD today, why don't we? Uh, let's, let's check out what's going on in the dollar CAD world. So you can see, as I click into the Forex, I have all of my pairs and you just really need to scroll down to see uh, the entirety of the offerings uh, that we that we have for each individual market asset class. Um, and then as you see, you know, you have the different expiration times. So this one that I clicked on expires at 11 a.m. tomorrow. 
that's going to be 22 hours from now so you can see the expiration time how much time you have left and once you click in you'll see all the available strikes now there are quite a few available strikes on these daily forex contracts we actually um likely will be be paring those down and uh you know offering sort of the same range but not quite as many because uh you know there's almost too many to choose from here right <laughs> um but let's choose i'll do one like right at the money so right right in the middle here trading around 50 50. let's do this uh one two seven seven zero so i can click either on the actual you know number itself or i can click on the buy or the sell and that's going to bring up both the chart in the middle of the screen as well as the deal ticket on the right hand side of the screen as well where i'm going to actually place all of the trades very quickly i'm going to take some of this stuff off so we can just see the chart a little bit more clearly now um the charts are sort of uh there's a lot to learn about the chart itself i won't be going in depth into the charts today i actually do another webinar um if you do you know like here we talk for an hour or so i do a webinar about every thursday um probably won't be doing one until january now because with the holidays but anyway um we'll have one in january that goes over the charts and, and another one of the platforms and uh, uh generally on thursdays i do a webinar so so come hang out check it out um so, but you will see, you do have the charts in the middle of the screen, but let's go over to the right-hand side where we actually have the deal ticket. Um, this is gonna be where you place all of your trades, probably the most important part of the uh, platform itself. Uh, it's the, the part where you buy your, your contracts, you sell your contracts, you hopefully make money, but you might lose money. Um, obviously risk with all these things. Um, so as we go over, we see, first of all, our indicative price. This is gonna be the price of the underlying market or, or an indicative price of the underlying market. Um, what's important to uh, realize with this, it should be the price that's being quoted on the chart itself. Um, it won't always be the exact price. Like let's say you go to TradingView or somewhere else um, to look at another third-party chart. It won't be that exact price purely because what that indicative price is showing is basically our settlement process um, going through every second right so basically when these contracts settle we take like the last 20 ticks we uh, cut off the bottom uh, third cut off the top third um average the remainder that just basically gives a better um idea of what the market actually is pricing out at the end of the contract and uh you know protects against any sort of bad actors that might want to manipulate this um and so what is actually happening in that indicative price that you see is that calculation sort of calculated every single second throughout the day on every market and placed out there. So that's why if you go look at, you know, another third party chart it might be a little bit different and why you really want to be looking at this because this is where the market is and what you want to compare to your strike price. The strike price is uh, the line in the sand, right? That you want to be either higher or lower than, um, you know, obviously the binary options are. Uh, going to be greater than this is a choice on is this going to be greater than this number at the expiration time or uh, less than or equal to that number so we have the indicative price that's where the current market is we have uh, the expires in so we can see this one expires in 22 hours and 50 minutes and that's going to be at 11 a.m eastern time tomorrow um, so we see that 11 a.m will dollar cad finish higher than 12760 at 11 a.m tomorrow so that's the, the crux of the questions you want to be asking and want to be want to be answering. Um, if you think it will finish higher than that one two seven six zero point, you can go ahead. You can buy that contract. If you think it won't finish higher than that, if you think it's going to go uh, go ahead and be below that one two seven six zero point at eleven a.m. tomorrow, you would go ahead and you would sell that contract. It's fairly basic, fairly simple, at least on its face, to uh, understand what's going on with these binary options. Uh, so let's say let's let's just buy this one um I'm, I'm gonna keep going down here so underneath this buy and sell uh so you can see sort of uh, it's buy but it's yes so you can see that you, you know if you buy it you're answering yes to that question that you're being asked right will it finish higher um you also see so there's these uh these little hundred uh and 250 you can see as i kind of swirl my hit my mouse around them um that's just going to be how many contracts are out there available on the market at that price so there are currently 100 contracts sitting out there on the back end that you can buy and that are being priced at $63.50. That's not necessarily every contract that's being out there priced. If you want to see the rest of the contracts that are out there on the market, you can hit show market depth because these are just showing the best prices. And now you can see every price, right? So 
not only are there 100 contracts that are kind of sitting out there on the back end that you can maybe buy off people for $63.75, there are also another 150 underneath that at 64.25, and same on the sell side with um, these numbers here. So if you you do ever want to see what's going on on these markets, what's going on on the order books, you can hit that show uh, market depth button and uh, you'll see the entire order book. On the live environment there, you generally will see a little bit more than these, uh, just these kind of two on each side on the demo environment. We have less market makers and generally less people putting those limit orders on. And you can also put a limit order on and see your own order on the uh, order book, which I will show you in just one second. Moving on down the order ticket, we have the order type here. There are two order types on Manix. Uh, there's a limit GTC that's going to stand for uh, good deal cancel or good deal close. Um, so a limit order is basically you setting your own price that you would like to pay in the market. Um, now, you can't just say, I want to pay $20 for this contract. This contract clearly costs $64 as the best available price on the market. But I can go ahead and you know put in a price of $20. And if this market ever came down to that price, right? If this uh, uh, binary option drop from $64 down to about 20, then that limit order would trigger. I would get into the, the contract at that point, at that price point. Um, so that's going to be really the limit order. The other uh, contract that we have, or sorry, the other order type that we have on the exchange is going to be your market order. Um, and a market order, for anyone that doesn't know, just gets you into the contract at the best available market price at the time you place the order, right? So if I really want to just get into this contract the quickest, the easiest I can, at $63.75 or whatever it's trading for right now, I can just do this market order. It's going to enter me into the contract. And you can see, because I'm not choosing a price for this, um, because I'm just getting into the best available market price, that I don't have this price um, selector. I don't have this price column here that I can select the price because again, for the market order, it's gonna disappear because I can only get on, on the market price. Then we have our size, we have our size, you know, it's just how many of these contracts do you want? You can move it up, you can move it down. For this first example, we're just going to do our, our one contract at $64.25 or around there. Um, then we have our max loss and our max profit. Max loss and max profit is uh, fairly easy to understand on Nadex. Uh, the max loss for any contract is going to just be the, um, so I can go back to limit order and show you, the max loss for any contract is just going to be what you pay to get into that contract. So if I pay $60 to get into a contract, that is the maximum I can lose on this trade. Uh, if the trade goes to zero, I obviously lose my entire $60 uh, initial purchase price. Um, there, you know, there's no margin, there's no leverage, so you can't lose more than your, what you initially put in, which uh, actually can be pretty nice for uh, a wide variety of examples. It's something that you never really think about until it happens, but um, trading a lot of other places and trading with leverage, trading on margin, you know, trading with options, there can be times when you actually owe more than the initial purchase price of the option. So um, it can be a little scary at other places, but luckily at Nanax for every contract, the, the binaries, the call spreads, the knockouts, you can't lose more than what you put into the contract or when you uh, open it up. And the max profit is just going to be 100 minus whatever you paid to get in for the contract, right? Because the maximum you can make on any binary option is gonna be $100, that $100 payout if you are, um, Correct. You know, if, if I if I were to get into this this contract, I wait until tomorrow at 11 a.m. and uh, it expires above this 12760 point, I would get a hundred dollar payout. Hundred dollars minus about 65 that it's uh, trading at right now is going to give you this max profit of 35 dollars. So that's where you get your max profit and your max loss numbers. Fairly uh, self-explanatory, especially on the binaries, but I do uh, we do show it there on the ticket just to make it a little bit easier. And before I place my order, I'm going to show two. Uh, these are a bit newer. These are probably put in a couple of months ago. Um, these new features. So it's the max ROI and the probability in the money category. And so that's that max ROI. That's going to uh, stand for your maximum return on investment. Uh, and the probability in the money is the probability that this is going to expire in your favor at expiration time. So really quickly go to max ROI. And if you do ever want to learn a little bit more. We do have a little blurb and then you can even actually learn more. We have a whole article about how this works. Um, but very basically what an ROI is, it's looking at how much you're paying to get into the contract versus how much can you actually get out of the contract, right? And it's basically your max loss, your, what you're risking, uh, uh, looking at that against how much can you actually make in profit, your return on your initial investment into the, the contract. 
Um, so for something like this, right, where it's trading about $64, um, obviously you're going to get a less ROI because you're getting into a contract that costs a little bit more. There's a little bit less uh, room for it to sort of uh, run if you get that hundred, that entire $100 payout. Um, and then you have the probability and the money. And the reason I'm going straight onto these, I'll, I'll show you sort of how these are related together, right? So as your max ROI uh, goes down, as that percentage is, is going down, your probability in the money is gonna go up and sort of vice versa. As the probability that it actually pays out goes down, your max ROI is gonna go up, right? Uh, and so we can look at this uh, pretty easily. because So the max probability, probability in the money, what that is showing is basically the midpoint pricing of the buy and the sell on any contract, right? It's basically saying, what is the market pricing in that this contract will expire in your favor? Because if you think about a binary option, it's priced between zero and a hundred dollars. Uh, you can sort of think of the price that you're seeing, or at least the midpoint price of the market is offering, as the probability out of a hundred that that, pro that that is going to expire in your favor, right? So um, because it's out of a hundred, that that price point sort of the probability it's going to going to happen. So we can see here that you know if it's right between 68 and 70, you're gonna have about a 69% probability, and that's about what we have. Uh, here for this probability in the money calculation. Now I said these two things are um, are intertwined, and I think this is a pretty important concept to understand about trading behind the option. So um, let's go down here and just for argument's sake, I'll choose one of these, right? So I just choose chose a contract that's way above the market price, and it's trading at eleven dollars and seventy five cents. Now you can see my max loss is eleven seventy five, what I pay to get in. My max profit is $88.25. So many of you out there, especially if you haven't traded binary options before, might be thinking, well, why wouldn't I always do this one, right? Why wouldn't I do this one as opposed to like a $90 contract? You know, why would I ever pay $90 to almost get, only get like a $10 profit? Why wouldn't I always pay $10 to potentially get a $90 profit? That sounds like a much better, um, you know, a much better proposition. Well, the reason is, and you can see down here, that yeah, your max ROI is going to be really high. Your max ROI is almost 700%, right? Because if you pay $10 to get in, you get out about $80, $90. That's a massive, massive gain on, on an initial investment. But the probability that's going to happen is very low, right? The probability that's going to happen is only around 7%. And you can see here kind of in the charts because you can see that, let's turn on off these strikes. So now we're looking at just, just the strike price that is, um, is for this. Well, you can see that yeah, this is probably going to, uh, or this is very unlikely to happen, right? Because the market's down here. I need, by the time this expires, the market to move all the way up here. Not out, not out of the realm of possibility, right? But it's uh, it's not a massive chance that that's going to happen. And that's being priced into the market. That's why this is so cheap. That's why if this happens, you get so much out of it. But the probability this happens is going to be much less. And we can see that same sort of thing down here, where if I buy almost a $90 contract, yeah, I, I can only make about $10 out of that. My max ROI, I'm at about 9%. Um, so definitely not a, not the same ROI we were just looking at, but the probability that this happens is much, much greater, right? The probability this happens, because again, looking at this, this example, I just need this market to not go against me really hard, right? I just need this market to stay above this point by tomorrow, about 23 hours. Now, again, markets can move wildly and, and this can definitely happen where you won't so it's nothing is guaranteed but it's that's what you're sort of balancing right that max roi the probability the probability in the money you're balancing these two things and that's why these max loss and max profits are like this okay i just spent a lot of time on that but i, I do think it's a really important um a really important thing to learn especially if you're a little bit newer to trading with binary options so without further ado let's actually place a trade on one of these things let's get back and let's see like a uh, really at the money contract here um, we'll go back and do this. I think this is one we're looking at. One, one, two, seven, seven, zero. I'm going to place my order. Let's do a market order. Just make sure I get right in. And there we go. We have a little confirmation that comes up. Buy one contract at $59 and 50 cents. And we have our open order or sorry, our, our open position, uh, down there in the positions panel. So I will go through the positions panel pretty quickly here. Um, so we first have our, our binary option, that's just our type, very easy, very self-explanatory. Uh, we have our contract here, we have our dollar CAD greater than 1270. Again, you know, that, that's the contract, we want it to be greater than 1270 at the expiration of the contract, so we did buy this one. 
probability of the money we just went over what that what that is uh the indicative so uh we did kind of when we were designing this place the indicative pretty close to this strike price so you, you can just pretty quickly see okay yeah the market is over this one two seven seven zero point right now right one two seven seven zero that's less than one two seven seven nine so still still in the money barely in the money but still in the money right now we have our expiration time tomorrow at 11 and that's 22 hours and 38 minutes away from now position plus one just means we have a, a one buy side position if i was on the sell side right um that would say i would say you know minus one uh our average price that's the average price we paid to get into this contract so that was 59 dollars and 25 cents that's what we paid to get into one if you have more you get to a weird price right um the current uh so right now that's um excuse me I have a little allergies today so uh pardon me if i if i do end up sneezing um, the average price, and then we have the current price. So the current price is $55. You'll notice, um, you'll notice that the current price that it's saying there is the sell price. And, and I'll explain this in just a second. So then we have a profit and loss too. That's uh, $4.75. Now this column right here, and especially these three numbers, the average price, the current price, and the profit and loss, those are very intertwined. And um, you might be able to tell already, uh, well, it, the the profit and loss it's showing you right now for a buy side contract is going to be the current price minus the average price, the price we paid to get in. That's going to give you that negative five dollars. Now, what that profit and loss is therefore showing is the profit and loss if you were to exit the contract right now, right at this second. If you're going to take the best available market price, you're going to take your buy side contract, sell it back in the market, you lose you know about five bucks before before fees. It is not necessarily, it's not necessarily the profit and loss you would receive if the contract were to expire right now. And this is a point I, I do usually spend a little bit of time on because I think it can be confusing. Um, so for example, let, let's go through this uh, real quickly. So we paid $59 to get into the contract. If we want to get out of it right now, we bought to get in, we would be able to get out at the sell price, right? Uh, same thing for our sell contract here. If we sell to get in, we sell, we basically take a downward sell side position in the market to get into a contract. We we uh, can get out of it. We can exit that contract at the buy side price, right? So you just, you're basically doing the opposite of what you pay to get in. Um, so going back here, so we bought at 59.25. If we sold out right now, what we can get on the open market for our contracts, $56. So that's about a $3 loss. Um, so pretty self-explanatory on its face now let's look at something like this so i'm going to place an order on this contract and let's uh, do an example like this so this is my contract i just placed an order on where no it's the bottom one so this bottom one is the contract i just placed an order on i play, paid 13 dollars 50 cents i can currently get out of this at seven dollars and fifty my loss on this contract would be five bucks about right however if this contract were to expire right now Actually, this contract would still be a loss. Let, let me let me choose a different one. Um, here, let's place the order there. Okay, so this top one. Sorry about that. So this top one, basically. So if I got out of this contract right now, I would take a loss about five dollars. However, you can see that I need the um, underlying market to just be higher than this than this point, right? So if this contract were to expire right now and not in you know 22 hours, I would actually be getting a payout, right? I, would, I paid about $95 to get in. I would get a $100 payout for a profit of about $4. Um, so just it's just uh, something to always remember, right? This P&L, it can be negative, even though like maybe if you hold it for another minute and it expires, you would actually get a profit. Conversely, it can be positive. However, if it were to expire right now, um, you know, you would actually lose money. Um, so again, it's just, just something to remember on that. Um, because let's say you get into a contract at, uh, you know, $10, like this one down here, let's say I get into the contract at $10, the market moves up a little bit, but not enough to get to my strike price, which is up here. This contract still going to be pricing like a positive number, but if it expires, it's still not above this point. Um, so I, I hope that, I hope that makes sense. Um, basically what I'm saying is the profit and loss is only showing you what this is profit and loss if you sell right now. If you hold it to expiration, it is just going to be based off where the market is in relation to where your strike price is, right? If it's higher than this point at expiration, you are going to get that payout. 
Uh, and if it's lower, you know, and, and you bought, right? If I bought this and it's lower, you are not going to get a payout, even if the PL might say you could sell it out of the contract for a profit or loss right now. And so how do you get out of the contract, right? Let's say, you know, we have this one here, got a got a dollar, um, got a dollar profit, it's still gonna be a loss when we take into account fees, but I'll show you really quickly. So we do have these two little buttons down here. There are a couple ways you can get out, but the easiest is gonna be the set profit target button. And basically it's gonna say, look, you uh, you can set one, the closing price right now, the best available price in the market, the market price is gonna be $61. You can place your limit order and you can get out. You can also set a profit target. So let's say, okay, I don't wanna get out right now, but if this does go up to 70 bucks, yeah, then I wanna get out. And at that point, my profit would be about $10.75. So I can place this limit order. And what that's gonna do is actually gonna put an order in here so, so I'm not getting out right away, but it is gonna allow me to set a profit target. And if that market does go up to that point at $70, it's gonna get me out. I'll go home with that $10.75 profit, wash my hands and, and we'll be done, right? You can also close out of the contract right now. So that's gonna be the close button. And uh, it's just gonna very quickly tell you, you have one, the price you got in, the current market price and the current profit and loss. So like, once again, just sort of showing you what's happening here with getting out of this contract. So I can go ahead and close my position. And there we go, I closed it at $60.75. I got about a $1.50 in profit. Um, now, taking into account fees, I would have actually lost money on that trade. So make sure you always take into account fees, dollar in, dollar out on a contract. So that's gonna be all of uh, how you get in, how you get out. You can also you know, click on the contract itself, but if, if you are new, um, you know, you, you can basically place the opposite side trade. So if, like I got in this contract to buy, if I get out on the sell side, oops, I can get out like that. And you'll see, I do get out of that contract at that point as well. Um, but if you are newer or just the easier way to do that is gonna be using the set profit target or using the close button on the bottom, uh, right, uh, bottom right hand portion of that of the positions tab. Um, so we do have our order over here. I'm actually gonna delete this one real quick so I can show you. So we talked a little bit earlier about this showing the market depth. Um, and let's, let's get another contract. Um, let's do the $72 contract. So we well, earlier when we got into a contract, we were just doing market orders, right? You can also do a limit order to get in. And uh, basically I was saying, look, you can actually see the your contract on the market depth. So let's say, I don't want to pay um, $70 for this contract. I think that's too expensive. I think the market's probably maybe going to go down and then back up. Or for whatever reason, I don't want to pay that. But if it goes down to 40 bucks, I want to get into that contract. So I can place this order. And instead of going to my open positions, it's going to go to my order panel. Now, um, I'll go over the order panel in just one second, but you can't actually see your order out there. There's my $40 order. It wasn't there before. Now it's sitting out there. If I put in another one, I'm 45, you know, you can see that out there too. So you can see your own orders and as a trader on the exchange, you can put in limit orders and actually appear on the back end. And basically, you know, that's sort of proof, I guess, that if that goes down to that $45 point, um, you would actually get filled and get into that contract. So this is gonna be where my working orders will live, uh, live while they're sort of waiting to be hit. Very, very similar to that open positions panel that we just went through. So I'm gonna quickly go through all of this, but it's basically all the same information. Uh, so we have our binary options, the contract name, the indicative price, the expiration tomorrow at 11 a.m. and the time until that happens. One of the, um, one of the main differences, sorry, here, so this is how many have been filled. So let's say I had, five working orders sitting out there and it goes down and hits that market price but only two of those get filled that would just show you that two have been filled this is the price at which i want to get in or get out and this is the current market price so still pretty self-explanatory now if i do want to uh delete this working order or i want to change the price of it i can click directly on the order itself so anywhere on this line and it's going to bring up my working order and i can delete it i can just say i don't want this anymore delete it get it get it out of here or I can actually amend it. So let's say, you know, 45, maybe it's not gonna hit 45, but if it gets down to 65, I can put that in and I can amend that order as well. So you can change that order, obviously, because you aren't actually in the position yet. Um, 
you just need to change that obviously before you get into the position once you're in the position you can't delete it you can't amend it you'll have to sell it back into the market um, at whatever price the market is willing to give you so it's going to be that that panel down there then we have the 24-hour history i will go to the history excuse me I will go into the history a little bit more um, in a second. This history is just a very quick um, order history. So it's gonna show you all the orders you've done in the last 24 hours and all the kind of order sent, order filled, order sent, order filled, everything like that. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I do use this 24 hour history sometimes, but I'll show you where to get to what I think is a better version of the history. But this one's kind of a quick reference point if you do wanna see you know, all the orders you've been placing. You can see all that here, and you can see all the dollar cat orders I've been doing on this webinar. So that's really going to be that bottom panel. Now, one other thing is you, you can kind of drop this panel down. So all of these panels that come up, you can kind of drop them away. So with these double uh, little double arrows here, hit that. That's going to drop that panel down. I can hide the side panel too. This kind of double arrow hide, and uh, you can do that with a ticket as well. Sort of hide at the top left here, hide and bring it back. Now, before we move on, um, there's one last thing I want to show on the ticket. I know we're spending a lot of time on the deal ticket here, but there, there's lots of learning. So there's one other bit of functionality, and that's the tear-off tickets, right? So if I hit this, it's going to open a new window. It's going to have my deal ticket in a new little window I can drag around um, everywhere on my screen. Now, um, there is uh, some, some cool stuff you can do to set this up, and I'll show you this real quick. This is how I like to set up my my sort of second screen when I'm trading on the demo uh, environment and I'm trading a lot of markets. So let's say, let's say I'm a Forex trader and I like to trade dollar cat. I like to trade Aussie dollar. I'm just going to do this quick. I'm just going to tear off one of each of these. I like to trade Aussie dollar. I like to trade Euro dollar. I'm going to tear one of those off. And uh, let's see, another pretty popular one is the pound uh, or the, the dollar yen. Um, so let's say dollar yen, right? So I have, that's four contracts that just tore off. Now, those are going kind of behind my screen, but I'll show you here. Let's, let's take this over here. So generally, I'll sort of do this on my second screen, but I'll, I'll do it on this first one um, for you. I can kind of pull all of these uh, these back up and then arrange them on my screen. So again, I do usually do this on another screen, but I can arrange this on the screen. I have all my deal tickets here now, and I can see a bunch of different markets at the same time. I can also, if you hit this, see, see how there's, there's a um, price ladder tab here? I can hit this price ladder tab on each, and this is how I set up a lot of my screens when I'm, um, you know, either just trading for fun on my demo account or trying to actually look at a lot of different markets, trying to make sure we have all uh, appropriate strike prices, appropriate things for all of our products that do look after our, our product offering and Danix as well. Um, so uh, you can see here, just from one screen, I can see all the different um, all the different available options. If you know one of these markets starts moving heavily up, heavily down, I sort of see that in real time with all these different price ladders on the same screen. Um, so this is how I do like to set up my second screen while I'm um, sort of doing my actual trading on my first one. You can also do this with the charts as well. So this is going to pop the chart out. You can uh, sort of hide the ticket, hide the chart. Um, there's a lot you can do with these tear off um, tickets. You can sort of set them up however you want and customize your screen however kind of best suits your, your trading method. Um, I will say just uh, if you can't find these, um, when it does pop them out, it does it in like its own window. So it's sort of easy for them to get lost behind your, your screen. So just make sure if you can't find where these, uh, you know, these, these tariff tickets are, just look behind the, um, the tab that you already have up. And again, so that tariff ticket, that's gonna be at the top right of the actual deal ticket itself here where I'm sort of scrolling around with my um, with my mouse. Um, I'm gonna close these, I'll be in. That's just how I like to set up my other, my other screen. Um, so that's gonna be really everything with the deal ticket and we really went through everything on the sort of the bottom open, open, uh, open position and working order panel. Um, what are we gonna do next then? We'll go over, let's do the top bar. So top bar is, um, that's some pretty useful stuff, but um, we can go over some of it pretty quickly. First of all, on the top left, if you're on your demo account, you'll have a thing you can open your live account. It's gonna take you to um, a uh, open your Natix account um, application form. Um, if you wanna open a live account, you can go there and do that. Uh, I will say, so for these demo accounts, I think 
right now, we only offer them for, for completely free. If you don't have a live account for 30 days, but once you open a live account, um, you can have it forever. There's no obligation to like fund your live account. So uh, if you if you aren't ready to actually fund and trade yet, you do want to practice more on that demo, you can always just open the live account. Don't have to put any trades in, don't have to put any money in. Um, as long as you have an open live account, you can have your demo for as long as you want it. Um, and you know, trade for, for free on that demo on that practice environment. Um, give me one second because I'm going to grab uh, a tissue very, very quickly. Apologies. <laughs> Apologies about that, everyone. Um, I, I do have just a bit of allergies today, and it's um, my, my nose is really getting messed up. But uh, hopefully it's the last last break I got to take. Um, so as I was saying, top bar, uh, we had the open the live account. Going over, we have our platform status. Uh, this is basically just showing the status of the platform. Um, you know, I think we, we do pride ourselves on our uptime, and I think around it's, I don't know the exact number. It's like 99.9% .9 uptime with the platform status. But if you do ever see something that, you know, maybe uh, your your orders aren't going through or um, just something weird's happening, that's a good place to look, uh, especially just to check like maybe it's your connection or if, if it actually is on us, that will tell you right here, this little platform status. But again, like I said, uh, it's almost always operational. And if you actually click into it, you have our status page, so you can see you know, the trading platform, account creation, payments, you know everything like that. We have our little trading calls that exceed price limits, if that's ever happening, um, like it uh, was last uh, last March or so, uh, March 2020, when that that crazy time was happening. Uh, the markets were just up and down and up and down, 20% a day. Um, wild, wild times for any any of you that were trading in those markets. Um, Going over, we have our exchange time. So just uh, something to remember, the exchange time is always set to Eastern time. It can be a little confusing. I know we're actually based in Central Time. I'm based out of Chicago. So, um, but it's just always good to remember the exchange time is going to be at Eastern time. All contracts, all everything's going to be quoted in that time. Then we have our, our account balance section. So, you know, we have our available balance, our account value, our position value. If you click into this, there's, uh, you can only show three at a time, but you can, you know, if I don't want to see my account balance, I can see my reserve. Um, if you ever are wondering on what any of these mean, you can hit, you can um, click that information bubble and you're going to be able to see, you know, reserve, they're the funds reserved for your working orders, including your fees, P&Ls, P&L from all your current open positions, right? So you can see everything like that. You can, you know, put up different, choose which ones you want to have up there and you can hide the values as well. So maybe you trade on, a public machine or maybe you do webinars too you, you do trading webinars but you don't want people to see how much you have uh in your um in your account i know a lot of our educators were asking for that so basically you can hide your the values uh that are in there or you can unhide them that's going to be that panel then we have our account tab so um this is going to be a, a lot of very important things uh before i do go over this also we have our demo over here this is just uh, if you ever maybe forget what environment you're trading in, uh, it'll tell you here. This says demo, and if we were in the live environment, we'd have a a live button right there, just to remind you that yeah, you're trading on the live environment. So um, please don't uh, please don't think you're trading with fake funds when you're you're actually trading with real funds. That's uh, a definite no no. <laughs> um, so going into our account section. So if you click on this account section, you're going to bring up your basically account overview in the middle of your screen here. Um, so first of all, you're going to have kind of a breakdown of where all your money is allocated to in your account. Right now, on, on the demo, it's usually going to be mostly available unless you have a ton of contracts on. So you can see this whole kind of circle is available. And this little squeak of a little thing there is our reserve. And then we have our position value as well. You see our total account value and our total P and L. Um, also on the demo account, this is going to be where you are going to replenish your balance. So if you have gone through the entire ten thousand dollars in uh, in fake play money, um, you can always come back in here and get some more. Now you can only do this once for twenty four hours, which I think it yeah it tells you here only once for twenty four hours, and it tells you it will be reset to ten thousand dollars. So you can confirm, and there we go. I got some more money. I was so I was below my ten thousand dollar point. I got some. Uh, I got that replenished, 
and obviously you can only do that if you're under 10,000 or if you haven't done it today. Yeah, so now it's telling me I can do it in 23 hours and 59 minutes. So um, hopefully you're not running through $10,000 a day in a demo. I do always uh, uh, recommend that people trade in a more realistic manner, but you know, it is your demo account, trade how you want to trade it. Moving on down here, we have our um, residential address and our contact details. Now in the live environment, this is also where you would see a very important part of the platform, that is your, uh, your wallet. So your funding, your withdrawals, um, all that good stuff, your, you know, um, your bank accounts, that's gonna be in this section as well. Now, because we're on the demo account, obviously um, that's not good because none of that is, uh, is important for demo when it's all fake money, but it's very important for live. So, um, just just a notation that it is going to be in this account section here. Um, or you're also going to have your residential address and your contact details. It is pretty important to make sure this stuff is up to date, especially on your live account. Now, your demo, you can see, and, and especially because this is a demo I just used for webinars, um, so I don't really have uh, really real stuff. You can see I live in Trader Town, awesome, spelled incorrectly. Um, so that's definitely a real place. Um, but uh, if you do want to edit, you do need to edit your details. Please do edit that and, and uh, make sure on your um, you know, one, two, three. Make sure on your real uh, live account that this is up to date because sometimes we do have to send you stuff in the physical mail, uh, namely uh, tax season. Tax season is coming up. We send out those 1099Bs physical mail to the address we have on file, and we always have like. Uh, hundreds returned every year because people don't keep this up to date. So just make sure this is up to date, right? Um, same thing with the contact details. Again, this is on my demo, so and it's on a demo I, I actually just used for webinars. So this obviously isn't our real contact details, but uh, it is important um, because sometimes we have to call you about certain things. Um, sometimes we need to email you about what happened with your trades, um, just to get in contact with you. So make sure you keep that up to date and you can edit that as well. Same place, little ed edit button. Uh, same changes. Moving down, we have our history. Um, so this is the main place that I go and look at my history, look at what I've been doing on my uh, trading account. Um, we have our transaction history or our order history. The transaction history is just going to show the actual entry and exit of contracts, while the order history will show every order view place, right? All your limit orders, um, orders sent, order filled, right? You'll see a lot of that. Um, so that's what the order history will show. I use transaction history 99% of the time because I think it's better for uh, trying to figure out, you know, what actually happened in my trades, what I've been doing in my trades. Also, transaction history will show, um, and you can see here I can do trading history or fund history. Obviously, on a demo, I won't have any fund history, but on the live environment, if you want to see, you know, your history of deposits, withdrawals, that's where you can see it as well. And then you can choose, um, you know, you can. Let's look at the last 30 days and I can view my history, right? Um, that's weird. Hmm. It was very strange that uh, my transaction, transaction history didn't come up at first. Um, but uh, we can see here, this is my transaction history. This is what I've been doing today. We have our, our buys, our sells, and the, the, fee, the dollar fee, right? So these are all pretty much what I have been trading on today. You can see all my settlement payouts, buy, sell, fee, sell to close, right? So if you close, if you buy a contract, they'll tell you that you actually sold out of that to close the contract. Um, all that good, fun stuff. Excuse me. Um, you can see my, I was trading our uh, some of our event contracts, which uh, those are some of our, our new newer contracts I made, might uh, plug at the end of the um, webinar here. Um, so this is the transaction history. You can obviously change up how much is showing, just last 24 hours, last few days, et cetera. Um, now I do know that some of that this isn't the best maybe for calculating your entire PL. And we are aware of this. We are working to fix. It's actually probably one of the uh, biggest remaining issues on this platform that I would like to fix. Um, so we are working on a new way to do it. But for right now, the best way to do it is probably just going to be to hit this download button. It is going to, now my, my Chrome is a little messed up, so it doesn't actually show the, the history. So let me, um, I'm gonna go into my history here and pull that out. But basically, almost always, it's gonna do that little, um, do that little thing where it pops up on the bottom left, like with your download, as you, as, you, know, as you know on Chrome does. Um, as you know on Chrome does, that's not a sentence. <laughs> um, 
But uh, so then you can go in here, you can see everything. And if you just, uh, you know, I'm going to take this off this credit adjustment, you can sort of see your entire PL. So basically, if you come down here and um, you do equals sum, just a little uh, Excel thing, uh, you can actually sum up this whole column and you can see your PL for this. I've lost about two grand or nearly three grand. Um, so this is going to probably be the best way to very quickly see how much money you've gained or lost over a certain period of time, your overall P&L. Again, I, I know that downloading a CSV and manually summing it up is not the best way to go about this. We are working on it, but for right now, probably the easiest way to get your overall P&L um, on certain contracts. And you can, you know, you can go ahead and um, filter by certain contracts, et cetera. Um, so yeah, you, using Excel, I know I use Excel a lot, but um, so I'm fine with it, but uh, we, we are working on a, on a new way to do it inside the platform itself. Going on down to statements. So the statement is just going to be uh, as it loads here. Um, basically it's what we just looked at with transaction history, but it is in a statement form. So uh, I'll kind of scroll down while I take a sip of my coffee, but You can see there, um, it's going to be all uh, all of your transaction history put in a statement form. So if you really like that, it uses like a PDF statement that you that you like to keep for your records, you can go in here and you can grab your statement out of there. You can also download it. Clicking this will again, um, I, I, like I said last time, my Chrome is a little messed up. It doesn't show my downloads, but generally it should pop up this download uh, at the bottom. I have a question coming in. Uh, what if we don't have Excel? Can we still download that? That is a good question. I know what I know what will download um, because it'll download as a .csv file. Um, you know what? I'm I'm honestly not sure if if it'll just open. I think you might be able to open it in Google Sheets. Let me um let me see here. Sorry, I'm doing something on my second here. I'll pull it back over here. So this is what I. So I think you probably can actually open this um, in Google Sheets uh, or in a free version of Excel. Um, that is a good question because I know it'll download. It'll download as a CSV um, file. That's the that's the file type like .csv, like old word is .doc. Um, but I'm not sure. That's a good question. I'm pretty sure you should be able to at least open it in Google Sheets. Um, and and I apologize if you don't have Excel. Uh, I think there is a free version of Excel as well that you can like just read only, and maybe you can copy that out into a Google Sheet. Um, I'm sorry, no, I don't have a better answer for that because um, it's more of an Excel-based question rather than a purely platform-based question. But I, I can try to actually figure that one out um, for you. Uh, and if you if you want to send that question to our customer service team, maybe they actually have a, a better solution there. Um, I'm gonna move forward. I know we are only have about 10 minutes left, so I want to make sure I get to everything. We are almost all the way through, but um, so down here we have our, our contact us page. Um, so this is gonna be a couple of different ways you can actually go ahead and contact us. Um, you can email us customer service at nadex.com. Probably gonna be one of the better ways to actually get a response, especially if it's more long form question. You can write to us as well. This is our physical address. This is where, you know, when we're going to the office, I'm, I'm probably going in like once or twice a week now. Um, you know, it's still uh, still scary here in Chicago with uh, some of the, the, the pandemic stuff going on. We'll, we'll go too much into that. But anyway, so you can go ahead. You can write to us via snail mail if you really want to. I would recommend not doing that because it obviously will take a long, much longer time to get to us. But if you do really like sending letters in or there's something you need to physically send us, you can send it to North America Derivatives Exchange at this address that is our office that we go into, um, used to go into every day um, before before 2020. Um, but uh, one of the better ways to contact us is going to be this customer service at nanix.com um, number there or or uh, live chat, which I will show you how to get to live chat in just one second. We also have our feedback section. Feedback section, very important. We put it in here twice because it's super, super important. Please leave us feedback on the platform, on the products, on anything you want to see. Uh, this isn't like a black hole suggestion box that goes nowhere. Everything that's put in here um, gets kind of generated to a report. I get it every single morning from my email when I'm you know, reading my coffee, starting my day. I start it by reading 
stuff people have been putting in this feedback section. It goes to me, it goes to some of the, the project managers at Mavex, it goes to our developers. So it goes to a lot of people that actually do read this and look through this and look at your suggestions. Um, and a lot of the stuff we have built, stuff like the tear off tickets, stuff like the, the quick charts, um, the, there's, there's a lot of functions, features, functionality that we put in the platform based primarily on feedback, stuff a lot of people are asking for. So uh, you love the platform, you hate the platform, there's something that you think is terrible that we've done, leave it in here, you won't hurt my feelings. I wanna know how to improve this and, and make this a better uh, platform for all of you uh, to train on. Uh, now, that's I'm not gonna sit here and say that every single suggestion that we ever get, we're gonna put in, obviously that's not feasible, but if we do see a lot of people asking for the same thing, um, we, will, we will try to do that. With the uh, the limited time that we all have here, um, and then moving on down, we have a refer a friend. You do have to have a live account for the to participate in the refer a friend program. Um, I'm not going to go super in depth into how all that works, but if you do want to learn more about it on your demo, you can hit learn more. And if you do have your uh, your live account um, going, you you will, it will um, sorry this this section will give you a link that you can paste. People can use that. Um, and uh, you can actually get some cash uh, to trade on from that refer a friend program. Um, again, if you are interested in that, make sure you go uh, look at all the rules for it, make sure you're doing it in the correct way. Um, but yeah, that's where you're gonna find that refer a friend. It's gonna be in the My Accounts section. And then if you do wanna log out, it's down here. I'm not gonna hit it right now, but you can log out by going down here. So that's gonna be the My Accounts section. Um, pretty, pretty important section there for the platform. Uh, the last section that we have to look at is our left-hand column. We kind of start and end on this left-hand panel here. So super quickly, going to go through this left-hand panel. This this uh, markets tab. This is this is going to be the default one. So this kind of markets tab right here. This is going to be the default when you actually come into the platform. This is where you actually go ahead, go around. Um, you see all of your markets that you are available to trade on. Moving on down on this left-hand column, you see this little updates. So this is gonna be where any uh, updates to, to contracts, to holiday hours, as you can see here, um, these are sort of the, the hours that we have around this upcoming Christmas holiday. Um, uh, any any futures rollovers, really any kind of important information we need to tell you, it should be in this update section. As you see, if there's a new one, uh, when I first click on that, there was a little like one in a bubble that was going around as I, as I click in. Um, you can see, so, you know, new features we put here sometimes, that's uh, and the max ROI and probability in the money feature. Moving on now, we have this little how-to thing here. If you click into this, um, you can actually go through and do some courses on how to place some trades. So if I click on placing a binary trade, it's actually gonna walk me through step-by-step -step on how to place my first binary trade. It'll say, you know, look, select your product type, binary, select your, you know, markets, and it's gonna go step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step through um, through how to actually trade. So, so there's uh, we are working on putting more of these in. I think right now there's only a couple, but uh, this is a pretty useful way, especially if you're new to get acquainted with how to trade on the Nanix platform, uh, learn a lot of these things. And that's gonna be this how-to panel. And some of them, uh, some of these are just, you know, articles, like how to exit position early. You just click on an article and it'll pop that out for you. Um, we have, next going down, we have our mobile app. So. Um, we do have a mobile app. Now it is not in the app store, so it, is, it can be a little confusing, uh, but to actually access it, so if you click on this mobile app on the side here, you're gonna get one of these QR codes. I'm sure after the year of the pandemic and uh, going sort of away from menus, everyone should know how to use a QR code. You scan it with your phone, it'll come up and uh, it'll basically take you to, I'm not sure if you can see that, take you to the login screen. Um, once you log in, it'll prompt you to add it to your home screen, and then it will work like uh, like any other application on your phone. So, and if you wanna read more about that, learn a little bit more about how that works, you can hit that learn more button and uh, learn a little bit more about how it works. Next now we have the contact us panel. So um, this is how you're gonna get to, uh, not only do we have this email here again, customer service at nanos.com, but you can also go chat with an expert. So this live chat, um, I can put my name in, Adam, Caden, um, and I just spelled my name wrong. You can see I'm a, you're, you're dealing with the brightest of the brightest here. <laughs> um, you, can, you can put all your information in, and this is going to be the fastest way to get an answer um, from our customer service team. Um, so if you maybe have something you need really fast and you don't need to type out as much, use live chat if you have a longer question, 
uh, maybe use that email address. Going down here, we have our feedback section. Uh, again, it's really important to give us your feedback. It's so important we put them in here twice, so give us your feedback. And then at the bottom left, we have the settings panel. Settings panel here. Uh, these are going to be all the different settings you can choose. So quickly, I will go through all of these. I, I am cognizant that we are coming uh, right up on an hour here. Um, so first of all, we have our tolerance. So this is going to be the different tolerance levels. Um, not going to go super in depth on what the tolerance is, but if you do want to learn about it, you can kind of read about it here and on our site. Very basically, is all of the market orders on our exchange. What they are actually are, they're, they're called market order with protection. And very basically, it's sort of a protection level on uh, massive market swings uh, when you're trying to do a market order. So very basically, the default for this is going to be 10 when you come in. Let's say that I, I come in, I'm trading a five-minute binary, which on a five-minute binary, so the price is going to swing really wildly because it's really fast. And let's say that I there's a contract trading for 60 bucks, right? So I place a market order for that 60 bucks. So basically in that millisecond that it takes from sort of your computer to communicate with the back end of the exchange and come back with you, that all happens like a fraction, fraction of a second, but it's possible that in that time that that happens, um, the contract jumps from $60 to $80, right? Well, if it jumps over $10 over this tolerance level in that time, it's actually not gonna fill that contract. It sort of protects you against paying what a price you didn't wanna pay for the contract, right? Um, but if it's you know $70 and it comes back at 75, well, you actually still get in on that because that's still the best available market price and it was under this tolerance level. So if you don't want that happen, you can choose very low. If you always want to get filled, you can choose up to $25, I think. Um, so that's going to be that tolerance level and this is where you change it. You also have your um, order type. So I set mine to limit, but you can default to market. And that's basically just when you open up another ticket, you can see now it's market and now it's limit, right? So you can default your order type. Default contract size is going to be the size that comes up when you uh, if you open up a deal ticket. I recommend leaving it on one and just manually adjusting it because if you you know have the default on ten and you actually put ten contracts in, there's really not that much that we can help you with in that because it's not Nadex you're trading with. You're trading with another person on the exchange, so you know you've kind of entered that with them. So just make sure that that this is set to one or that you are always aware of how many contracts you are buying. We have our session inactivity, so this is how long it will log you out after you don't do anything on your screen because I mainly trade on my home computer. I have that set pretty high. If you trade maybe like in a public place, um, you, you probably want to set that to low so that if you accidentally forget to log out, it'll log you out. And then last but certainly not least, we have the place where you can select your um, light mode or your dark mode. I'm a dark mode user for like everything, but we do have a light mode here. I'm going to squint because this is going to burn my eyes. Uh, but uh, yeah, so if you do prefer light mode, definitely personal choice. We do have that op option. I highly prefer dark mode on pretty much everything I use. Um, so there's the dark mode. So that's going to be all of our settings. Uh, I think we have really gone through everything. Um, I know that was a lot and we're kind of running up right on time. Remember, if you do want to learn more about charts, um, I will be doing a charting specific one. Uh, I don't have another webinar this year, but uh, next year in January, there will be a charting specific one. I also do a webinar on call spreads on binaries. Uh, so about every Thursday, um, check back, uh, especially in the new year, check back every Thursday. And I will be doing webinars if you did uh, enjoy hearing me speak about uh, all this stuff. Um, if you do have any questions, I'm going to go back to the, uh, the slide. But if you have any questions, throw them up in the chat right now. I will uh, go ahead and answer them. I'm just trying to make sure I... I went over everything, but I'm pretty sure I did. Um, so yeah, uh, throw those questions in the chat now and I will give a second for um, any questions that are coming in. Uh, and while those come in, I'll go ahead and, oops. Sorry, I don't know what's happening with. Hmm. That is very strange what just happened there. I don't know what my computer was doing. Um, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so if you do have any questions, definitely ask them in the chat. And uh, there we go. Um, and, and while you're doing that, I'll put this up on screen. This is going to be, uh, first of all, customer service at adex.com if you need to get in contact with us or live chat us. Um, if you are enjoying trading here, 
uh, drop a review on a trust pilot. It does help us out. Um, I do. Uh, I never like sort of uh, begging for reviews, but uh, our social media people will um, hurt me if I don't. So um, obviously just a joke. Uh, but uh, yeah, go leave a review at Trustpilot if you are uh, enjoying Nadex. It does really help us out. Um, and then here are all of our socials, all the goodies. So uh, we have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Nadex on most of them. Definitely go give us a follow on that. And I have a question coming in that actually ties right into what I was just talking about. Is there a replay of recorded version for this webinar? Yes, there will be. Um, and that's gonna be on our YouTube. So on our Nadex YouTube, if you just go and search on YouTube for Nadex, that's where this is going to be. Um, the recording will be up. Actually, every recording, um, including previous ones I've done, previous ones, everyone uh, that does webinars at Nadex will be up there. So uh, that'll probably be about an hour, by the end of the day, generally. It's up depending on um, you know how many videos, how many webinars our uh, video person has to has to do for the day. Um, so if there are any other questions, uh, feel free to leave them in here. I will stay around for one more second looking for any other questions. If you do have any other questions that I didn't answer, or if you're watching this on a recording and you really have a question, definitely shoot an email to customer service at nadex.com. Uh, they're all uh, very knowledgeable to people that work on that team. I know them all very well, and they can definitely help you out with that question. All right, that's going to that's gonna bring us to the end of this webinar today. Thank you so much for coming, hanging out with me for the last hour or so, listening to me talk for the last hour about the platform. I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of this, and uh, best of luck in all your trainings, and uh, I hope all of you have a really good holiday season. So I will chat to everyone in the new year. Have a good day, y'all.